Chinese banks are getting swallowed up, state-owned companies are preparing for civil unrest, and average citizens are fleeing China in record numbers. Then more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. The Communist Party is desperate to shore up China's teetering banking sector. It's in bad shape. As you might recall, two years ago, there were massive protests at four regional banks in Henan province after average citizens couldn't get their money out. The CCP solved that problem by sending in tanks. I mean, they solved the protest problem, not the fundamental banking problem. You know that saying, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail? Well, when you're the CCP, every problem looks like a nail that you call the tanks on for some reason. The fundamental banking problem is there's colossal hidden debt. And it's coming to a head. The Wall Street Journal says off-balance sheet government debt is around $7 trillion to $11 trillion. Which, for those of you who've gotten desensitized by all the huge budget numbers lately, it's equal to the net worth of around 40 Elon Musks. A lot of this is from money local governments borrowed to pay for roads, bridges, and so on. Which I hope are mostly a better investment than this one. Or this one. A few hours later. Or this one. Or, you know, you get the idea. But at any rate, economists estimate $400 to $800 billion of China's hidden bank debt is at high risk of default, meaning it probably won't ever get paid back. You can't fix that with tanks, although I'm sure they tried. What if we run over this money to teach that missing money a lesson? But the CCP has another solution. Merge hundreds of small banks into big ones. They actually started this process at the end of 2022, after this. But all that really does is move the same bad debt to new banks, while also giving the CCP more control over the banking sector. And according to Bloomberg, the CCP's previous merger enforcement didn't necessarily lead to improved bad loan ratios. It's like if you have a bunch of undercooked chicken nuggets and try smushing them together into a strip, you don't get a merger that yields fully cooked chicken tenders, you get salmonella. So I guess better luck next time? Speaking of China's crumbling economy, I've talked a lot recently on this show about China's other economic problems as well. Maybe the CCP will somehow fix all these issues with banking, real estate, unemployment, and so on. Or things could suddenly start falling like dominoes. Well, guess who's betting against dominoes? It's McDonald's. McDonald's is aiming to have more than 10,000 restaurants in China by 2028. That's double what they have now. Which makes sense for the company that's also doubling down on their Big Mac. I just had one of those the other day. It was great. And I haven't had meat sweats like that since the 4th of July. So to help McDonald's, I would like to give them some free advice. Don't do it! Don't double down on your investment in China. And not just because you're contributing to China's obesity epidemic. It's because you're gonna get screwed in China. Your best course of action there is ba da ba ba ba, I'm leaving it. Also, did you learn nothing from investing in Russia? Sure, you had some success there in the early days, but then Russia invaded Ukraine and all the sanctions forced you to exit Russia after three decades. But whatever, I don't really care about your corporate well being in China. As long as in New York, you keep those double Big Macs flowing. Mmm. Four all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed, future triple bypass surgery. And after the break, the Biden administration is preparing for a massive conflict with China. Welcome back. The Biden administration is subtly preparing for the coming conflict with China. They're planning to invest billions of dollars to replace China-made cranes at U.S. shipping ports. This is a smart move. About 80% of ship-to-shore cranes nationwide are made by a Chinese state-owned enterprise called Shanghai Zhenghua Heavy Industries. The FBI has said these cranes could be used for CCP espionage. The cranes come with specialized software that makes unloading more efficient, like by registering and tracking the destination of containers. But it also has a huge risk. Imagine if there's a war. And China can see everywhere the U.S. is exporting weapons and materials to. Or they could just turn all the cranes off, causing major supply chain problems across the U.S. Sure, it's cheaper to buy cranes from China until one day you realize what a high price you truly paid. And even worse, the price is so high you won't be able to reach it with all your shady Chinese cranes. 
Meanwhile, Chinese state-owned enterprises are fully aware that massive social unrest is inevitable, and they're busy preparing. Many of them are reviving Mao Zedong-era militias. Basically, these are small armies meant to protect companies when there are protests. It's a sign of authorities increasing concern about social and political instability amid the country's economic slowdown. McDonald's, though, apparently does not share this concern. I didn't realize their mascot and their leaders are both total clowns. And after the break, the latest wave of illegal immigrants to the U.S. is Chinese. Welcome back. TikTok's CEO has just been named honorary chair for the upcoming 2024 Met Gala. Let's recall that TikTok is owned by a Chinese company, ByteDance, which is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party, which means that it heavily censors its content and pushes Chinese state propaganda to TikTok users around the world. So why on earth would the Met Gala give such an honor to TikTok? Is it because TikTok represents a dystopian future, which is on brand at an event where everyone dresses like the rich people from The Hunger Games? I have no idea. In an unrelated coincidence, TikTok is a major sponsor of the 2024 Met Gala. No correlation, I'm sure. This is ridiculous. Letting a Chinese-controlled propaganda company play such a big role at the Met Gala is the biggest embarrassment since AOC wore that Tax the Rich dress there in 2021 when tickets cost $35,000 a piece. It's like trying to fight noise pollution by attending a monster truck rally. You know what kind of content you won't see on TikTok? Stories about how the CCP is tightening exit controls because citizens are trying to flee China. Take note of that, McDonald's. If you see a bunch of people fleeing a cave in terror, it isn't exactly a great survival instinct to go, ooh, let me grab my family and check out what's going on in there. How big of an issue is this? Well, in just the last four months or so, 30,000 Chinese nationals illegally crossed into the U.S., the majority of them via the U.S.-Mexico border. That's compared to just 55 in the same period three years ago. A lot of these immigrants first land in Ecuador, which has no visa requirements for Chinese passport holders. Then they use a combination of bus rides and long treks by foot to cross at least eight international borders through Central America and eventually into the U.S. The Marvel Multiverse Saga has taken a less winding and convoluted route to get where they're going. Why would so many Chinese people risk such a long, dangerous journey? Are they into extreme travel? Maybe, or maybe, and hear me out on this one, is it possible they prefer that to living under the CCP? The U.S. House of Representatives has passed a bill called the Uyghur Policy Act. It aims to address the CCP's, you know, massive genocide of Uyghurs. That sounds great, so what would it actually do? Well, the Uyghur Policy Act would mandate the creation of a strategy to raise international awareness about the CCP's persecution of minorities. That's kind of vague. Also, there's already a strategy to raise international awareness about the CCP's persecution of minorities. It's called China Uncensored. Like and subscribe. Okay, so more specifically, it would establish a coordinator for Uyghur issues within the State Department, who would also lead public diplomacy efforts in the Islamic world. Makes sense. The governments of virtually every Muslim-majority country have been silent on the CCP's persecution of Uyghur Muslims so far. Wouldn't it be great if these countries started pressuring the CCP to end its human rights abuses? Oh, yes, it would. But I'm not sure this bill can accomplish that. Firstly, it has to pass the Senate and get signed by the president. Then it needs the State Department to actually appoint a competent coordinator for Uyghur issues and give them the resources to do all this, which, given the State Department's failure in addressing the CCP so far, I don't have high hopes for. And even if all that happened, it's going to be tough to convince Middle Eastern governments to change their behavior on China when they have so much Chinese money flowing in. So the Uyghur Policy Act is just more typical American political posturing. It makes it look like politicians would actually be doing something to help Uyghurs, but it probably won't accomplish much. No wonder it has bipartisan support. Lawmakers are also weighing a blacklist for U.S. firms lobbying on behalf of Chinese military-linked companies. For those of you unfamiliar with Washington, D.C. politics, it works like this. A lot of companies want Congress to pass new laws, or not pass laws, in ways that benefit them. To accomplish that, they hire lobbying firms. 
these lobbying firms meet with Congress people and offer to help them by doing things like host fundraisers for their next election campaign. So they sway them in the direction they want without outright forcing them. It's like curling, but with cash instead of broomsticks. This might already sound kind of corrupt, but it's technically legal. American politicians' favorite type of legal. What makes it super sketchy is that Chinese companies have been hiring these American lobbying firms, and these firms try to influence U.S. policy on behalf of Chinese interests. Like Chinese drone maker DJI, last year alone they spent $1.6 million lobbying Congress. So this new proposed blacklist I mentioned would stop Congress people from meeting with a lobbying firm about any issue if that firm represents one or more Chinese companies on the Pentagon's entity list. Here's that three-page list. It's all Chinese companies that are national security threats because they work with the military. Included is drone maker DJI. So if this proposal passes, it would really throw a wrench in the CCP's ability to get the U.S. Congress to do its bidding. All we need now is for the U.S. Congress to pass a law preventing themselves from letting Chinese companies help them raise money to get reelected. So I won't hold my breath. But if Congress does somehow pass it, it will restore my faith in humanity. It would also cause a big problem for China, one they hopefully won't also try to solve with a tank. Now I've got a video I want to show you about a serious problem in American society. But first, I'd like to answer a question from one of our fans who directly supports China Uncensored through Patreon. And today's question comes from Richard C. Pernan. Is it true that the relationship between Russia and China is not solid and could go to war in any moment? But Russia had no choice than embrace countries like China, Venezuela, etc. All the countries put aside by the USA for different reasons. Great question, Richard. And I think you nailed it. There are lots of cracks between Russia and China. Part of that is because the US sanctioned Russia over the Ukraine invasion, which affects Chinese business interests. But the problem isn't the US. The problem is that authoritarian regimes keep trying to invade other countries. And free countries have to either respond or just let the world slide into oppression. For now, all the dictators are sticking together. But do these guys really seem like they'll be best friends forever? Again, Richard, you make a great point. Thanks for your support. Now here's that video I want to show you. We live in a society where everything is sexualized. What are the consequences? Now that might be something YouTube considers too controversial to talk about, which is why I'm hiding that conversation in gaming content. Check out the pitfalls of sexual desire according to Doki Doki Literature Club. Be like Richard and contribute to China Uncensored through our crowdfunding website, Patreon. Just click that orange button. For as little as a dollar an episode, you can help keep the show going. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.